because the air is polluted, at least you can do something inside your home. Bring these plants in your home, bring the pure, fresh air inside the house. So that's why I put that up there. I wanted you to get it. Look at the peace lily right here. The peace lily removes alcohols, acetone, again, the trichloroethylene, it removes benzene, and even formaldehyde from indoor air. I mean, think about that. I mean, these are, this is practical, isn't it? This is something you can do even while you're waiting to get to the country places, if, you, if, the, if that's your goal, and you're trying to get into more pure air, bring the pure air in your house. You see, the reality is this. When you go into an area that's filled with trees and grass and flowers, what's happening is very simple. Whenever you and I, whenever we exhale, we are releasing literal poison. It is called carbon dioxide. It's a poison, okay? And then what happens is when we, when we breathe in, we're breathing in pure oxygen. Where's that oxygen coming from? It's coming from all of that greenery. This is why some people are trying to get out of city environments, get into country environments. When it comes to health, our goal is to get pure, fresh air for good health. So the green is taking in our poison and it's giving us back oxygen. That's what's happening in the scientific world. Until we can get into an environment like that, if that's your goal, then this is what you do in the interim. You find some incredibly beautiful plants that also have medicinal properties. You put that here in your living room. You put that in your bedroom. You put that in your bathroom. You put them in different places. And you let that take in the poison in your rooms, even from your carbon dioxide. And what is it giving back to you? Pure, fresh oxygen. This is practical. This is what you and I can do. You understand that? And so even when we're living in the cities or what have you, we should, that's a different message, you know, but we should be striving to get into environments that are more surrounded by nature than surrounded by the creations of men for many reasons. But until then, this is your practical solution for pure air. You got that? All right. You all took your pictures. I'm going back to the original slide. Now, again, looking at this here, where are we? All right. Good. So, again, when we're looking at those laws of health, we just want to, again, go and do the best that we can. If you're not getting the open air, now you know how to get it. Daily exercise. You got to move, folks. Sitting is the new cigarette. If you're sitting all the time, sitting all the time, sitting all the time. I went to the British, uh, the, the uh, is it, is it, is it, was it the BUC? British Union Conference. Yes? So, my dear brother David and I went over there with my daughter Jada, and I wanted to see uh, Elder uh, uh, Sweeney, thank you, Elder Sweeney, because when I did, when I came to England and I spoke at the North England Conference's camp meeting, 2015, Elder Sweeney was one of the people there. And so I said, eh, let me stop by and see him. So when I went all the way up the steps to go and, and see him, I was so thrilled that when I walked in his office, I saw him not sitting, but I saw him standing at his desk working on his computer. He had one of those standing you know, desks where you can stand and work on your computer. That kind of thing is really what a lot of us need. If some of you right now are living a very sedentary lifestyle, always sitting at a desk and just typing away and doing all this data entry type stuff, and you need to learn how to get up and stand up sometimes. Your body was made to stand. Your body was made to move. Your body was not made to sit all the time. And so you got to start thinking about these principles, okay? I'm hammering this point across because I don't have a problem with natural remedies. I don't have any problem with that. But the problem that I have is that I know our, our way of thinking as humans. We want the quickest, the fastest way to get something with very little effort. And this is why the average person who's sick does not do the things that are on the screen. We're not doing these things. We're not doing these faithfully. But we want a pill or we want a procedure but we're not doing this. So that's why I'm spending time on this, all right? So again, the key is, are you getting plenty of sunshine? Are you getting proper rest? Are you drinking enough water and hydrating your body? Are you practicing temperance, self-control in every area of your life? Are you always eating food that is nutritious? This is what should be the rule of your life. This is God's plan. This is what the Lord wants you to get on. 
This is what God wants you to get on before you stop popping herbs and drinking teas and doing all this other stuff. Before you start doing all that, God says, make sure you're doing this first. You understand that? Are we clear on that, family? Yes. All right, so this is key. Now, let me show you what a day can look like. This is by no means, I know this is not going to be everybody's reality. What does a day look like of following God's laws of health? Okay, what does a day look like? So I'm just going to give you an example. How do I live out God's plan in a single day? Okay, let's talk about that. Take a look. Here we go. You ready? This is a day. We're going to call this the beginning of your day. How do I live out God's plan in a day? What does that look like? Here we go. Number one. 6 a.m. You rise in the morning and you get yourself a cup of water. That's one of the first things you can do. Now, for some people, they like to put some fresh lemon in their water. I would highly recommend that, okay? If you can put some fresh lemon in your water, take half a lemon and you squeeze that in your water, lemon is very acidic as a fruit. But when it is drunk in the body, the body metabolizes it, that it becomes very alkaline, okay? And alkaline blood is very, very good as it relates to combating sickness and disease. Disease has a very deep struggle flowing through alkalinic blood. It is when our blood is very acidic, that is when we run into trouble. How many of you are from the West Indies? West Indies, Caribbean. All right, brethren, brethren, brethren. All right, I speak as one who has it flowing through my veins too, all right? One of the greatest problems that we have in Caribbean culture is when we, eat a, eat, when we eat a meal, we are some acidic people. Can I tell you why? Because when you eat a meal, especially the Caribbean culture, on one plate, yam, dumpling, banana, rice and peas, or peas and rice, whichever way you want to say it, that is all starchy food. That's starch. That's a lot of starch. That's a lot of carbohydrate. And that's very acidic. Okay? And it works heavy on the gut. Sometimes, if we have a green on it, maybe a little callaloo, a little spinach, a little something like that, but it, it's not a lot. And then it's cooked. Very rare do we have a large plate full of raw. Very rare. And so, this is the type of food that if you keep eating like that, that's why tomorrow morning we're going to really hit nutrition. I saved that one for tomorrow morning. When we hit nutrition, we're going to really talk about what does your body need to eat every day so that you can stay healthy. But that is not it. And notice that that plate I just mentioned, isn't it vegan? Mm -hmm. But the question is, is it good for you? Yeah, that's right. You see, just because it's vegan does not mean it's good for you. Mm -hmm. Always remember, alcohol is vegan. It's not good for you. <laughs> Always remember, white sugar is vegan, but it's not good for you. You understand that? So you got to raise the bar even higher when you talk about food. Don't just look for the fact, is it vegan? Yes. Okay, then you eat it. It's like you got to say, is it healthy? That's the real question. Is it healthy? You can make a, you can make a bowl of greens, but if you notice little, little oranges, goldenish bubbles all around it, that's a bunch of oil. And if you got a bunch of oil surrounding your greens, the greens are going to do nowhere near for you towards good than the oil is going to do for you that's bad. So when we talk about food prep, you've really got to think through your meals because it can be vegan but very oily. And now, and now again, so now you're still clogging your arteries anyhow, and the list goes on. So these are things you got to think about. Now, watch this. Alkaline. Put some lemon water inside. That's my recommendation. So 6 a.m., you get up, you have a cup of water, first thing of the day, even before you brush your teeth. You develop a little bit of vitamin B12 naturally in the bacteria in your mouth. So even before you brush your teeth, first thing when you get up, get a cup of water and drink it down, wash down the B12, everything else, and then you go ahead and progress. So what do you do next? So beginning of the day, have a cup of water. Then, I'm just using examples. Let's say 10 after 6. In other words, you get up. Thank the Lord. You get up, you go in your kitchen or wherever, you get your water. So let's say that took you about 10 minutes. At least, I'm giving you 30 minutes. I recommend more, but I'll give you 30 minutes. From 6, 10 a.m. to 6, 40 a.m., 30 minutes. 
That's where you're going to have your morning devotion. Okay? Morning devotion time. Either outside, where you can do it in sunlight, or you can use the light therapy like what we talked about last night. Right? 30 minutes. What are you doing? You're getting slight sunlight benefit, and you're also building up your trust in God because you begin your day having devotion with Him. Next. 6.40 a.m. Have another cup of water. This is very practical. I'm sick. How do I live out God's plan in a given day? When you drink water too much too fast, you will notice that your body becomes like an open pipe. As fast as you drink is as fast as you go into the bathroom and urinating. You'll notice your urinate, urination is absolutely pale. That's not the goal. Your urination can still have a little bit of a hinge to it, a little hint of color to it, okay? The idea is that it shouldn't look dark yellow or dark, especially dark orange, but if you don't want it to look dark yellow, you don't want it to stink, you know, these type of things. But when you're having urination and you'll notice that it's just kind of like a, you know, a, a, a light yellowish color or a light pale color, that lets you know your body's being well hydrated, okay? Typically, if you give yourself about 30 minutes between every cup of water, you will find that sometimes the third or fourth cup is when you gotta go to the bathroom. You don't always have to go immediately after every cup. So spacing out your water is good. It keeps you from making the bathroom your second home. Now watch this. 6.40 a.m., have another cup of water, right? 6.45, go outside and practice deep breathing exercises. That's where you start getting your open air or do it in your home with all your plants or what have you. But you start doing deep breathing exercises. Again, deep breathing exercise, Four seconds, seven seconds, hold it, eight seconds, lips pursed. Do you know that when you do deep aspirations of breathing, you're actually helping to purify your blood? When you're, bringing it, when you're breathing in pure fresh air, it's a very subtle way that you're purifying blood and you're assisting your body to properly prepare to digest your food when you have your breakfast. Deep breathing exercises, okay? Very important. Now, 7.15 a.m., have another cup of water. You space it out about every 30 minutes. Have another cup of water. 7.45, have another cup of water. 8 a.m., go ahead and have your breakfast. That's nutrition now. You're in the law of health of nutrition. So again, tweak your schedule. Do it according to your schedule. I'm just giving you an idea of how it could work. 8 a.m., have your breakfast. And then I like this one. 8 a.m., have your breakfast. Then, let's say you take 45 minutes. Why would it take 45 minutes to have your meal? You know why? Because you're chewing your food. Sometimes we eat too fast. You put the food in your mouth, and you're kind of like bite, bite, bite. And, and then you swallow, and you got like a whole lump or whatever going down your throat. That's not the way you do it. You want to just go ahead, put your food in your mouth, and chew it until it feels like applesauce. Chew it until it feels like oatmeal. Let it be mushy in your mouth. Then you swallow it. If you're doing that, you're aiding in digestion. Okay? You're preparing your body to properly digest food. One of the reasons why a lot of us are passing gas, one of the reasons a lot of us are getting very bloated, your stomach gets all extended after a meal, and all these things, is improper digestion. You're eating too fast. So one of the things you want to do, chew your food. So again, I'm giving you 45 minutes. Chew your food. Take your time. Then after you chew your food, take a digestion walk. You want to do it for 15 minutes, minimum. Seven and a half minutes one way, seven and a half minutes back. What is that? Mild exercise, and you're also getting some sunlight. Next. Two hours after a meal is when you start drinking liquids again. When you, when you eat food, it sits in your stomach first. After it sits in the stomach, then the food eventually moves over through something called peristalsis. It's going to move over into your small intestine. Then it's going to go into the small intestine, and then after the small intestine, it goes into the large intestine, and then after the large intestine, it goes in the toilet. Now here's the thing, how long does it take for that food to leave your stomach? If you're having a full meal, complex carbohydrate, protein, fats, etc. If you're having a full meal, it's going to take two hours for it to leave your stomach and go into your small intestine. That's why you wait two hours, 
until you have your juice of wa or have your water again. Do not drink water after an hour with your meal. Do not drink it with your meal. If you drink it with your meal, you're going to find yourself burping, passing gas all the time. It's going to smell very offensive, and you're going to be going through periods of indigestion. Your body was not made to break down liquids and solids at the same time. Everything with God is order. If you drink liquids and solids, your body's going to absorb the, the liquid first because it's easier. And then it's going to lead back solid. Now, here's the question. Imagine that you left bread in a room at 100 degrees for a period of hours. What do you think that bread is going to look like, feel like, and smell like? Good or bad? Bad, right? Body temperature, how much is it? 98.6 degrees, right about at 100 degrees. So what you don't want is you don't want to eat solids and liquids together in your gut because when you do that, your digestive fluids are going to first break down all that liquid and, get, and absorb back. So it's going to leave a lot of that solid sitting in your gut and it's going to go through what's called putrefaction, a really scientific word for rotting. And it's going to sit in your gut for a period of time. And I'm telling you, that's why when you burp and then you burp or when you pass gas, or when you finally go to the bathroom and you let it out, you're going to notice you got to tell people, listen, stay over there, give it, give it a few minutes, let it air out. You're going to go through all that stuff. Why? Because you got toxicity building up inside of you. you got toxicity. You see, God wants you to be healthy, but he needs your cooperation. You understand that? So again, this is what we're talking about. So this is why 845... If you finish your breakfast at 8.45 or 6.45 or whatever the time is, you wait how long? Two hours before you start drinking your, your, your drinks again. You get that? Yeah. All right, very good. Then, 11.15, have another cup of water. 11.45, have another cup. 12 midday, take some time for prayer. Take some time for prayer. Midday, just take a minute. Even if it's two minutes, even if it's five minutes. Pause from your busyness and take some time to talk to the Savior. Midday prayer. Then, 12.15, have another cup of water. 12.45, have another cup of water. 4 p.m. Now, I left a big gap in there, but you get the point. If you notice, look at how many times you had water. You had water, one, let me do a different one. Yeah, that's good. So you look at this. You had water here, one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's not even, you're barely at midday and you've already had nine cups of water throughout the day. Your body is well hydrated. Your body works very good when it's well hydrated. Okay? So I'm just showing you how practical it is. It can be done. So now, let's say 4 p.m. I'm giving you a whole window here. 12.45 to 4. You got a lot of stuff going on. 4 p.m. or earlier, it's time for supper. So again, that's nutrition. Then after that, 4.45, take a digestion walk again. What are you doing? Mild exercise and also more sunlight. Then 6.45, because you've got to wait two hours, right, after a meal. 6.45 to 7.30, exercise. Or this could be done early in the morning. You decide which one ever works better for you. Exercising in the evening or exercising in the morning. You do that based on your schedule. Then, after that, 8 or 9 p.m., evening worship, trusting God. 10 p.m., in bed, lights 